Welcome back everybody. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can use GB Studio to set up a gallery for your images. As you can see here I'm just pressing the directional buttons to scroll through these images and when you get to the end we'll come back around to the start. Uh, so basically with this I'm just going to be scaling down images and then taking their different values in order to make a grayscale image that we can use in GB Studio. And we're going to be using logo mode in order to not have any limitations on the background image, which lets us have these really detailed, and obviously I've added color as well in GB Studio, um, these really detailed backgrounds with a lot going on, which normally we couldn't achieve in GB Studio. So to begin, you will obviously need uh, image editing software. As you can see here, this is GIMP. I have set up some simple placeholders so that we can easily see what's going on inside GB Studio because we're going to set up the GB Studio project first. And you will need GB Studio version 3. The reason is we want to be using the logo scene type uh, in order to basically have unlimited um, tiles for the background. If we look into the GB Studio background um, tab in the documents uh, on the website, then we scroll all the way down here, it says the exception to this is scenes with their scene type as set to logo. And that's what we're doing. These scenes can use 160 by 144 sized images, which is the size of a Game Boy screen. Um, and there are no limits on unique tiles, but the logo scenes are not able to use actors or display a player. Okay, so what that means is we have unlimited freedom. We don't have to think about getting it down to 192 tiles. We can just purely put all of our artistic inspiration in, or pixel art inspiration into the logo scenes and then have a different way of setting up the scenes rather than having, for example, a point and click actor as the player um, in order to you know, go from scene to scene. As you can see in GB Studio here, I have four scenes. I've each called them page one to page four. Each of them have the same scene type of logo so that we can do the idea they have of basically having a gallery, right? We're going to be displaying our artwork in GB Studio. Personally, I'm thinking of buying a Game Boy camera, and I know that the Game Boy camera can only hold about 20 images at a time, I think. So to be able to take them off of that, and then put them into GB Studio and then create, um, you know, like a gallery, you know, like you would have on your phone um, of the images and even color them. I know in um, the Game Boy camera they, you can't really, I don't think color is supported. Um, so obviously with this we can just paint different colors and obviously we could um, fill in different sections of the image with different colors. Um, obviously that's a problem for a future me, um, but it is something that I am thinking about for the future. And we're going to start this tutorial by thinking about how we're going to link these pages together. So as you can see, I've got these little icons here of arrows, um, and that's because I want it to move from scene to scene or screen to screen or image to image by just simply using the arrow keys on the either the keyboard if you're going to be playing it on itch or obviously the directional pad if we're playing it on the actual Game Boy. So what we're going to do is find the attach script to button and then we're going to choose the button we want. So here's the right button and then all we're going to do is press change scene and we're going to choose the correct page. So we're imagining that pressing right makes the scene go to here. We then want to just simply copy that. If you hold alt and click down here, then it will paste it. Um, it used to be Control in GP Studio 2, and now it's Alt. Uh, and now, obviously, we want to change it to the left arrow, and then deselect the right arrow, and then change this from page 2 to page 4, because we want it to, when we press on the left, we want it to go back around to the last page. Uh, and then we're just going to go into page 2. We're going to paste that down. We're going to change page 2 to page 3, so that we are moving on. We're going to paste it down here again, click on the left arrow, unselect the right arrow, choose page one instead this time. And as you can see, we're just building it up so that we will have connections between every single page going forward and backwards. It's as simple as this. And let's say I had a, a menu that I wanted to go back to. I'd probably use a start or select or A and B. 
Um, if I press that, then it goes, you know, basically up to a different um, page, uh, which would be a menu page, right? And obviously, you want to make sure that you haven't got both arrows selected on on the second one. And if we press play, obviously our player is starting here. This is what this means. Uh, we could obviously move them to a different scene. Um, and technically, we don't have a player. Like I said in the documents there, we don't actually have a player. We're not meant to be seeing a player. But the player, technically, you know, the human being playing the game, will be viewing this scene to begin. As you can see, it's just loaded. And we're on page one. So if I click the right arrow, we go to page two, again, page three, page four, and then should be back to page one. If we go backwards, then we go page four, page three, page two, page one, and back around. Fantastic. So that all is working perfectly. So what we want to do now is create artwork to go into this. What I wanted to do with you guys is basically just convert a high quality image into a Game Boy image, knowing that there isn't a limit on how many tiles we can have. So basically we can make as detailed artwork as we want within the resolution of the screen. Uh, and obviously sticking to four colors. Um, I'll show you how you, we can, you know, make something that looks half decent on in this screen size. So I'm just looking at some famous landscape paintings. Obviously I'm going to commit some copyright infringement right now by copying this um, but if uh, we copy this and taking it into GIMP and I'm just going to paste it down it's probably going to be too big for the for the image size so we're just going to zoom out and when I scale it down I can you want to be looking at this interpolation um, for example text um, it will like blur if you scale up and down um, so we might want to think about none or accept the fact it will blur and use that to our advantage. So I'm going to use, I think I'm actually going to use none so that the colors are basically intact, but you will want to experiment and I might regret this decision. So let's just have it in there. Perfect. So as you can see, we have something that resembles artwork. I'm just going to put it here. And some images may not work with this, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to obviously create a group for this and put it into the group. Um, and I'm going to duplicate it so that we have multiple. And now we've got this image, I'm going to desaturate it. Because the Game Boy is working with four colors, we basically want to be working from white through grays to black, right? So I'm going to reduce the saturation to nothing. And then I press OK. I'm then going to go back into colors and I'm going to go to brightness and contrast. And I basically want to create as high contrast as I can, as I kind of want to be creating a black and white section. Um, and then what I want to do after that is create the grays in between. Um, then I know that there might be better ways of doing this, and I might actually figure that out as I go right now. So arguably I want to create high contrast and then slowly take the colors from that. So let's think about this logically. First things first, I want to take the very brightest of pixels, right? So I'm going to think about where my brightness tolerance will be. I'm thinking here, as you can see, there is some um, there is some detail in these objects here. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure how much detail I want because I want to give it to the other two in between grays. So maybe let's just keep this to the highlights. So there we go. So I've just created the highlights. And if I click on the black, select by color, I'm just gonna click the black and then I'm going to delete it. We can now see that we have uh, the very the very brightest of brights. So I'm now going to select those colors. I'm going to go to the very whitest color. And in the documentation, you can see that this is this color here. Uh, and you want to be using these four colors when you're making this as well. And with that color, I'm going to just make a huge brush size. I'm just going to fill in that selection. Uh, and I'm going to hide that. I'm going to go back to the original and I'm going to duplicate it again. 
And I'm now going to create the green color, not the dark green, the light green. And we're going to hopefully have a, a good layer of, um, you know, four layers of brightest to just pure black in which creates some detail and shows off this image. I'm expecting, hopefully this hay bale will be okay and we'll kind of see the tree line, but um, we'll really see. I haven't done this before on this image. So we're just going to go to saturation, saturation is zero. I'll go to colors and then brightness and contrast. So all the contrast all the way up. And if we remember where we had it before, and we want to go up from that. I think that looks good. And let's just think about where the the dark green will be. I'm thinking the dark green will probably be there. And anything you see black will then be black. So maybe even less. Yeah, so if we think about where the, the whites were. Okay, I'm thinking that would be perfect. So again, I'm going to remove the blacks, select the whites, and then color them in. And if I hide everything else, we should begin to see how this is starting to work. So as you can see, the white is now on top of the green. And then in the next run, I will have the dark green and the pure blacks. So I'm just going to duplicate the original layer again. Going to make sure we see it. Go to colors, saturation, bring it to zero. Colors, brightness, contrast, contrast all the way up. And then now we want the brightness so that we're creating the dark blacks and also the dark greens. Okay, so. I'm thinking that would be perfect. We're having a very minimal amount of black here, which I think is good because it's a very bright painting. Okay, so now we can... Actually, what I'm going to do... Yeah, I'm just going to select the blacks, paint them in with the GB Studio black. It doesn't really matter. It's basically the same anyway. Uh, then the white, we're going to color in the dark green. And if I show these layers again, we now have something relating to the original image. If I put this up to layer, you can see, obviously, when we scaled it down, it became very pixelated. And we have the same image, but now with four colors. And we got to control where the highlights were and where the shadows were. So if I export this, I'm going to hide page one and page whatever. And I'm also going to hide the arrows. And I'm going to just export it to the, the same name of the scene that I had before. This means that it will be in the same place and it, I won't have to do anything in GB Studio. Yeah, let's replace it. Then as you can see, we now have this artwork sitting right here. And as you can see, the background, uh, as I updated test one, is right here. And uh, the thumbnail looks great. Um, I would argue maybe we need to change this to a green. We might want to create our own custom palette to make sure you know, we're doing the image justice. I really like this palette, so I think I'll leave it on that one. And then let's press play. And there we go. We have our artwork, which will display something similarly to this on the Game Boy screen. And if we go through our pages, we obviously still have page one, page four, whatever. And obviously this is page one. So I'm just going to go away and I'm going to make page two to four, um, you know, similar to this so that we have our own little gallery. So welcome back, everybody. Uh, as you can see, I've put in four different images, and I've also colored them very basically with the with the preset colors that GB Studio is giving me, uh, so that we have the difference between um, you know the bushes and the sky and the water. And same here, I didn't do anything here, but I also added some red onto this field of hay here. And my hope is that it just looks a slightly bit more, you know what. More colorful basically our human eye can like differentiate things better with color right um so let's have a look at it and obviously all it did was update the original test page
pages. So by using the arrows, we can move through them. Uh, and because it's pixel art, it might actually work best if you're, you know, further away from the screen. Currently, this is almost full screen. Um, so it might not have the best effect if you're viewing this on, you know, on a TV or something. Um, but if you're, say, viewing it on your phone, it might be a lot easier to uh, see it. I might actually just do that now by shrinking it down. Yeah, so now I've made it more thumbnail sized. You can uh, see the effect of it, and it definitely looks awesome. Like, it looks like we're looking at a, a painting, and obviously these are paintings. I stole them, yes. Um, but I feel like if we were to take a actual photograph, we could make a very similar result um, by tweaking the values. When you do this yourself, maybe block off, for example, this line here and do the sky and the background separately to the foreground and the focus. You can also see how, you know, some lines disappear, but in painting, this happens too, right? But what it means is it's harder to color it. So I didn't color this one. And this, this image was very colorful. And obviously when you take it down to black and white, it loses the color, obviously. Uh, but it does still stand up. Like a great painting is great because of its, its basically its, its contrast. And it's and it's framing, right? So obviously I did have to crop it, and it was a rectangle, and now it's a square. So we did lose some of the framing, um, but arguably it still stands up quite nicely. But yeah, I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the best. Remember to like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment on what you thought of this one and what you want to see next. And please let me know if this was helpful. If you uh, are now thinking about you know making artwork in GB Studio differently now that you know about the logo mode and about how we can transform images, paintings, anything into a Game Boy resolution and even think about coloring them inside GB Studio. So on that note, thank you very much for watching.